the 22nd of June, 1941. With 134 divisions at full fighting strength and 73 more divisions for deployment behind the front, Nazi Germany, under the codename Operation Barbarossa, invades the Soviet Union, its ally in the war against Poland. Hitler considers the invasion as part of his plan to provide the German nation with Lebensraum, meaning living space, and an opportunity to destroy communism, which he loathes. The Soviet Union sees catastrophic military losses in the first six weeks after the German attack, but fails to collapse and fights the Germans who terrorize the local population. Among this local population is a widow who will become known for resisting the Nazi occupation and avenging her husband's death, killing more than 50 Nazis. Her name is Maria Aktyabarskaya. Maria Vasilevna Aktyabarskaya one of ten children of poor Ukrainian peasants, was born on the 16th of August, 1905, in the village of Kiat, located in the Crimean Peninsula, then part of the Russian Empire. Maria spent her childhood and youth in Sevastopol, and in 1921, she moved first to Jankoy, where she completed six classes, and then to Simferopol. After completing her studies, she worked at a canning factory, and then as a telephone operator at a city telephone exchange. In 1925, she married Ilya Ktyabersky, a cadet of the Crimean Cavalry School. Thanks to her husband, Maria began to acquire an interest in military matters. She conducted active social work, became involved in the Military Wives' Council, and was trained as a nurse in the army. She also learned how to use weapons, mastering machine gun shooting and driving vehicles. She said, Marry a serviceman, and you serve in the army. An officer's wife is not only a proud woman, but also a responsible title. Among the wives of the command staff, she was famous for her exquisite taste in clothes, home decoration, and was also a skilled needlewoman. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939, when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. Poland found itself fighting a two-front war, when it was invaded by the Soviet Union from the east on the 17th of September. Warsaw officially surrendered to the Germans on the 28th of September, and one day later, in accordance with a secret protocol to their non-aggression pact, Germany and the Soviet Union partitioned Poland. However, this pact would not last long. Since the 1920s, core policies of the Nazi movement included the destruction of the Soviet Union by military force, the permanent elimination of the perceived communist threat to Germany, and the seizure of prime land within Soviet borders as Lebensraum, meaning living space, for long-term German settlement. As such, Adolf Hitler had always regarded the 23rd of August 1939 German-Soviet non-aggression pact, commonly referred to as the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, as a temporary tactical maneuver. In July 1940, just weeks after the German conquest of France and the Low Countries, Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands, Hitler decided to attack the Soviet Union within the following year. On the 18th of December, 1940, he signed Directive 21, codenamed Operation Barbarossa. This was the first operational order for the invasion of the Soviet Union. Operation Barbarossa began on Sunday the 22nd of June, 1941. Three million German soldiers were reinforced by Finnish, Romanian, Hungarian, Italian, Slovak and Croatian troops. Within weeks, German divisions conquered the Baltic republics of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. However, after initial successes by the German troops, the advance came to a standstill in October and November 1941 due to the onset of the Muddy Period. The day after the start of the war with Nazi Germany, on the 23rd of June 1941, Maria Aktyabarskaya, along with her sister and other members of the families of the Red Commanders, was evacuated and arrived in Tomsk in Siberia, where she worked as a telephone operator in an anti-aircraft artillery school evacuated from Leningrad. Hitler tried to conquer Leningrad, which failed, and the following siege lasted 872 days from the 8th of September 1941 until the 27th of January 1944. The blockade became one of the longest and most destructive sieges in history, and it was possibly the costliest siege of all time due to the number of casualties which were suffered throughout its duration. As a result, the Wehrmacht, the German armed forces, lacked the strength to take Moscow and a protracted war was imminent. For Nazi Germany, this attack was not an ordinary military operation. The war against the Soviet Union was both a war of annihilation between German fascism and Soviet communism, as well as a racial war between German Aryans and subhuman Slavs and Jews. 
among those murdered by the Nazis was also Ilya, Maria's beloved husband, who had been killed fighting the forces of Nazi Germany near Kiev in August 1941. She received the information about her husband's death at the end of the summer of 1941, and she learned that he had been struck down by a machine gun burst. The news angered her greatly, and she became determined to fight the Germans to avenge her husband's death. She went to the recruitment office, but the 36-year-old telephone operator, then suffering from tuberculosis of the cervical vertebra, was refused. Maria then began to actively participate in the collection of funds for the Red Army. Aside from her main job, she was busy with sewing and embroidery, tablecloths, bed linens, and handkerchiefs for sale. She had also sold almost all of her possessions. The resulting sum collected by Aktabarskaya by the fall of 1943 was sent to the Defense Fund, followed by an immediate letter to Josef Stalin with a request for permission to go to war. The letter read, For his death, for the death of all Soviet people, grinded down by fascist barbarians, I wish to carry out vengeance on the fascist dogs, for which I have donated all my personal possessions, totaling 50,000 rubles. I ask that the tank be named Fighting Girlfriend, and that I be sent to the front as the driver of the said tank. I can already drive and operate a machine gun, and I have been trained as a Voroshilov sharpshooter. I send you warm greetings and wish you hell for many, many years, to the fear of enemies and to the glory of our motherland. The Kremlin's answer came soon after. The letter read, Thank you, Maria Vasilyevna, for your concern about the armored forces of the Red Army. Your desire will be fulfilled. Please accept my greetings, Josef Stalin. After completing her training, she was posted to the 26th Guards Tank Brigade, part of the 2nd Guards Tank Corps, in September 1943 as a driver and mechanic. On the turret of the T-34, she emblazoned her tank's name, Fighting Girlfriend. Many of her fellow tankers saw her as a publicity stunt and a joke, but this attitude changed when Aktyabrskaya began fighting in Smolensk. She fought in her first tank battle on the 21st of October, 1943. Aktyabrskaya maneuvered her tank in intense fighting, and she and her fellow crew members destroyed machine gun nests and artillery guns, killing around 30 Nazis. When her tank was hit by gunfire, Aktyabrskaya, disregarding orders, leapt out of her tank and effected repairs under heavy fire. She was soon promoted to the rank of sergeant. A month later, during a night battle from the 17th to 18th of November, Soviet forces captured the village of Novoyazelo in the Belarusian region of Vityebsk. During this attack, fighting girlfriend crushed an enemy artillery gun and destroyed up to half a hundred enemy soldiers. In addition, Maria enlarged her reputation as a skilled tank driver when she took part in an assault on the German positions. When a German artillery shell exploded against her tank's tracks, halting her advance, Maria and her fellow crewmen jumped out to repair the track, while other crew members provided covering fire from the turret. Eventually, they fixed the track, and her tank rejoined the main unit several days later. After the battle, Maria wrote to her sister, You can be happy for me. I've just been baptized in battle. I'm slaying these Nazi bastards. Sometimes, I'm so mad, I can't even breathe. Two months later, on the 17th of January, 1944, Aktyabrskaya fought in another night attack. The battle would prove to be her last. The attack took place at the village of Krinki, near Vidyebsk. During the battle, she drove her T-34 about the German defenses and destroyed resistance in trenches and machine gun nests. The tank crew also destroyed a German self-propelled gun. Subsequently, the tank was hit by a German anti-tank shell, again in the tracks, and was immobilized. Aktyabrskaya immediately got out of the tank and began to repair the track amid fierce small arms and artillery fire. She managed to repair the track, but she was hit in the head by a shell of fragments and lost consciousness. After the battle, she was transported to a Soviet military field hospital at Fastiev, near Kiev, and then to a military hospital in Smolensk, Russia. The shell's fragment had hit her left eye, and it would soon transpire that it had reached the brain's large hemisphere. Maria remained in a coma for two months before finally succumbing to her injuries on the 15th of March, 1944. She was 38 years old. Maria was then buried with military honors at the Heroes' Remembrance Gardens in Smolensk. The following August, Maria was posthumously made a hero of the Soviet Union in recognition for her bravery in the battles around Vidyebsk. Though Maria's tank fighting girlfriend was later destroyed, the name would later be given to several more tanks. 
Maria will forever be remembered as a brave woman who defied the Nazi occupants and sacrificed her life for what she stood for. There were many tears shed for Maria Akhtabarskaya. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.